let's get started here and I'll just grab one of these photos and let's head it into the edit module. Okay, so right off the bat, um, whenever it comes to landscape photos, if I'm not shooting on a tripod, I'm more often than not gonna crop my shot. So whenever I open up a photo inside of edit, I usually hit the C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. Um, for this particular photo, since I was playing with it earlier, I already have that 16 by nine preset up here. Um, if you're not sure, the crop tool, once you select a tool from the toolbar area, you're gonna have this tool modifier section up top here that you can use to kind of modify whatever tool you have selected. So I'm just gonna keep that at that nice 16 by nine preset. And then I'm gonna modify this crop a little bit. So I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'll just pull down on the corner a little bit. And let's kind of keep it actually inside of these two um, posts here. And then I'm just gonna pull up on it a little bit, keep it so it's not directly in the middle of my frame. Just like that. Another thing I wanna check is I wanna check to see if my photo is level. And an easy way to do that is you can simply click on this leveling tool here. And then you can find a horizon line and you can click on it. And then you can just drag your leveling tool across your photo. And it looks like it was pretty level. So now we have our photo level and cropped. We can just hit enter. And now our photo's cropped and we can start modifying it a little bit. So the first thing I do is I crop. And then the next thing I do is I sort of set down, <clears throat> as I sort of set down that foundational tone for my image. And what I mean by that is just inside of this develop tab here, we have this tone and color pane. And when we're modifying tone and color, we're gonna be modifying our image as a whole. If you're shooting raw, for example, you're gonna be able to modify all of that raw data within your image. The thing about tone and color is that you can't actually mask or blend or remove it from specific parts of your photo. That's why I like to think of it as the foundation of your image because it's always gonna be there. So inside tone and color, we have a few different options we can use to modify this photo. This first option here only comes up if you shoot raw and it's totally fine if you don't shoot raw. On one photo raw can process, you know, any sort of photo file type from JPEG to TIFF, PSD, whatever it is. But if you are shooting raw, um, for example, this is a CR2 photo that I shot with a Canon, you can choose the camera profiles for that image. And there's a few different ones in here. There's on one standard, landscape, portrait, vivid, neutral, and then you have your cameras one that are the ones that are built into your camera. For this particular photo, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna grab this landscape option. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, The landscape option does a really good job of kind of bringing in a little contrast, adding some um, color in these trees, and really kind of making that photo pop a little bit better. Well, I want it to be a little brighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head down here and I'm actually gonna pull up on two specific sliders. And the two sliders I want to pull up on are my midtones and my shadows. And my midtones specifically, because I want to pull out sort of the mid tonalities in this image. And I like to think of your midtones as sort of your grays. You know, they're in between your blacks and they're in between your highlights. It's basically just like pulling up on your grays in your image. So I'm just gonna pull up on my midtones and you'll notice that by pulling up on it, sort of those middle tone areas, it's kind of the, you know, the middle between that really, really dark and that really, really bright, that midtone slider really helps to pull up those areas in this photo. So I'll just pull those up until I get this house the way I want it. Whenever I'm pulling up on certain sliders, I like to kind of have a focal point that I'm staring at so that I have that as my subject in my photo and I don't overdo it with the slider. So as I'm looking at that building right there, I'm pulling up on the slider and I'm making sure that that gets correctly exposed. So probably about right there. The next slider I want to pull up on is the shadow slider. And the reason I want to pull up on the shadow slider is simply so I can pull out some of these darker areas in these trees here. So I'm just gonna head over and I'm gonna pull up on my shadows. And you'll notice that by doing that, that's really bringing out some of those dark areas in my image. 
Now be careful whenever you're modifying these sliders because you can in turn make your image look flat. You'll notice that if I pull up on this quite a bit, it brings out those nice shadowy tones, but it also makes my image look quite flat. Well, if you wanna make your image look less flat, there's a few different ways you can do that. For this particular photo, I'm gonna do that inside effects, <clears throat> excuse me, inside effects after we set my foundational tone. So let me just go down and I'm actually gonna pull back a little bit on the midtones. Probably about right there, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna make sure that my temperature is set the way I want it to be. Well, the great thing about On One Photo Raw is you can actually set your color temperature simply by grabbing this dropper tool here. So I'm just gonna grab this dropper and I'll just drop it on this nice white area here. And it must've been not as gray or white as I was expecting because it kinda cooled the photo down quite a bit. So I'm actually gonna pull back on that a little bit more just to warm it up a tad. Probably about right there is good. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we've done a good job of setting the foundational look for this shot, but we still gotta go in and I wanna add some different detail. I wanna help out this sky because we kind of blew it out by pulling up on our midtones. And I also wanna modify the color a little bit. So before I head into effects, let me just check the Q and A to see if there's any questions. So no questions right now pertaining to this particular image. I'll get to your question at the end, Phil. And if I don't, then I'll just uh, shoot you an email with that. So um, let's get back to this real quick. So, okay. So next, I'm gonna, next thing I wanna do to this photo is I wanna take it into effects and I want to stylize it and add some different filters to it. So let's just click effects here. We'll add a filter. And the first filter I want to apply, I wanna bring in some detail to this shot. So I'm just gonna click on dynamic contrast here. And it's added some nice detail to this image. Well, I know that there's a ton of different preset styles in all of these different filters, and it can be confusing on which ones you need to use. Well, one of my favorite things to do with filters is to simply just try them out and lower the opacity. For example, I wanna bring in a little bit more contrast to this area on the water, and I also wanna bring in some detail and this dynamic contrast, this natural preset isn't doing it for me. The surreal preset is a lot too strong. And then soft is too little. So I'm actually gonna go into my more option and I'm gonna choose this grunge contrast option. And I know it's insanely strong on my image right now, but the great thing about On One Photo Raw is that with any of these filters or local adjustments, you can pull down on the opacity to make it look more realistic. So I can head up to my opacity slider and I'll just pull down on it and watch as it makes it look a lot more natural just simply by incrementally pulling up on it. Now if I turn that filter off and on, it does a good job of bringing in some nice contrast into this photo. And I can always go down and I can modify this filter by using these different sliders within it. So if I wanna make it less cringy, or less cringy, less grungy, I can go down and I can pull up on the blacks so that it's not adding so much true black into my photo. I'll just add, that looks pretty good right about there. The next thing I wanna do is I actually wanna go into this vibrant slider and I'm gonna double click it to make it zero. So now I have some detail pulled into my photo and I've kind of brought some contrast back into that area that we pulled up so hard on earlier. So now I wanna go in and actually wanna modify the color in this photo a little bit. So I'm gonna add a filter here. And I'm just gonna add a color enhancer filter. And one of these great um, preset filters inside the color enhancer filter is this purified shadows. Uh, option. And purify shadows simply means that it's going to take away some of the color within the shadows so that it's not so bright and vibrant. So if I turn this off and on, does a good job of kind of removing this 
uh, green overlay over this bottom area. And I can always go in and I can pull up on it more or less if I want to modify it even more. Boom. Okay. So now what I can do is if I go down in my color or my dynamic contrast filter and I turn this off and on, it's applying some detail to my clouds areas up here and I don't really want that applied to my photo. Well, the, the next thing I do when I'm applying filters to my shot is I like to apply a couple and see how they look and then I'll go in and I'll kind of mask and blend them. So for this dynamic contrast filter, I don't want it to be applied to the sky area at all. I just want it to be applied to this middle area in here. So I'll go into my masking options in this filter and I'll actually select a luminosity mask. And the reason I want to choose a luminosity mask is because the sky area is a lot brighter than this middle area here. So I'll just go in and I'll choose luminosity. And if I view this mask, it's automatically creating a mask for me based off of the brightness and dark areas in this image. So if I invert this, now that mask is only being applied to this middle area and not much of it is being applied to the sky. Well, if I wanna refine that mask, I can head over here and I can go into this dynamic contrast masking options area and I can just pull on these level sliders here to refine it and bring a lot more of it into that middle area. So now if I view this and I turn this off and on, you'll see it's only being applied to this middle area in here and not anywhere on my sky. So now what I wanna do is I wanna actually modify this sky area a little bit and bring some of the life back into it as well. Cause you'll notice that if I turn or if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, there was a little bit of color and some drama in my sky, especially right in this area here. Well, if we want to kind of bring that back into this photo, we can use a local adjustment layer. So before I head into my local adjustments, let me just check to see if there's any questions on YouTube or on the Q&A. Okay, so Philip Zwick asks, can you discuss when to apply detail in develop versus dynamic contrast and or sharpening inside of effects. So whenever I'm applying detail inside of develop, I'm usually applying it to a photo that has a lot of areas that need detail. So say 95% of that image is a bit soft and you wanna apply detail to it. I would go ahead and apply detail to it inside of develop. Whereas if you have a photo like this, where you wanna kind of selectively apply the detail, then I would apply it inside of effects where you could actually mask and blend it. So um, kind of just the summary of that, I would just apply detail inside of develop if you're applying it to your entire photo and you don't mind that that is being applied to it. And if you wanna selectively apply detail, you know, for example, if you wanna modify your subject and not your background, I would do that inside of effects or local adjustments. Let me check YouTube real quick. So no questions on YouTube so far. And okay, let's just keep going. Thanks for the question, Phil. And then I'll uh, check. So no, we're good. Okay. So let's go back into this photo here. Okay. So now I want to deal with the sky area. Um, and I want to do that selectively. So I'm going to do that with a local adjustment layer. But I kind of created this nice little outline for myself with this mask here. And the cool thing about Photo Raw is that I can, I can actually copy and paste masks onto different filters and local adjustments. So if I wanna use this filter as a guide, I can copy this mask. I'll head over to my local adjustments. I'll go into the masking options. I'll paste that mask. And then I'll invert it and now if I view this mask, 
I'm just going to hit, I'm going to hold down shift and hit X on my keyboard so that I have my local adjustment brush selected and it's set to paint out. And you'll notice that we have these houses in here that are completely white. That means that exposure in my local adjustment layer is being applied to them. So you notice how kind of ugly they look in there now. Well, if I go in here and I view this mask, I can simply use my brush and I'll just brush that white off of those. Oops, maybe increase my opacity to 100. And then I can just brush all of that off that area. So if I turn this off and on, that adjustment's only being applied to that sky layer. Well, the sky layer is a little bit kind of unnatural for this image. Well, a great thing about these local adjustments is that you can actually paint with color and you can use these same adjustments while you have this color on top of the image. That kind of sounded confusing. So if you want to add a little bit of color onto the sky without actually modifying the sky color too much and having the ability to modify these sliders, you can head down and you can click paint with color. I'm just going to use maybe lose a blue color. A dark blue. Okay. So now if I go over, I'm going to go to my mode. Oh, let me close out of this. I'm going to go down to my mode and I'm going to choose classic. And classic simply is just going to basically um, replace the color. It's going to kind of overlay this adjustment on top of the cloud. So now if I go up, I'm going to go into my blending modes here and I'm going to choose darken. Oh, actually, I'm going to choose overlay, and then I'm going to pull back on the exposure a little bit. Oops. Sorry, that's not the blending mode I wanted to choose. Whoops. So we had it at negative one. Oh, that's what it is. I wanted to replace color. And then we don't need a blending mode. We just go up. And now what we can do is we can just play with the opacity for this adjustment. And you'll notice that if I bring it up a little bit, there we go. I can kind of pull some of that color back into the sky that we lost earlier. Also, I can play with the temperature down here. So if I want to remove some of that saturation, do that. And now let's go up and we'll use our brush right here we we'll lower the opacity, and then we'll just brush some of this out over here. So now if I turn this adjustment off and on, and I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, The sky area looks a lot better and it could be a little bit less blue. So let's just go down and let's just make this paint with color a little bit darker. There we go. Okay. So now I'd like to say we have that foundational look set for our image. Um, it's safe to say we've, you know, brought out a lot of the exposure in this photo. We've dealt with the sky. We've dealt with our midtones. We've added some detail. So now what I want to do is we can take this photo to the next level inside Photo Raw by adding some different layers onto it. And my favorite thing to do in photos, if I'm not really sure what to do, is I'll usually just bring in a nice bird layer. Um, so let's head up to our layers pane here. And if I want to add a new layer, I can simply click this plus button here. And we'll go into Browse, Downloads, and we'll go into Birds. And I'll just add this nice bird layer here. Hit V on my keyboard, and then I can move this bird layer up. We'll just put it maybe right here. And then notice there's a few right here, so I'll just hit B on my keyboard. I'll click my masking options and hit B on my keyboard. 
and then I can just brush those out. Oops, brushed a little too much of that guy out. There we go. Okay, and the great thing about these layers is that you can modify them individually also. So what I tend to do if I put you know, a bird in the sky or something in my sky that's kind of distant, is I'll actually head up and I'll lower the opacity for that bird layer. And you'll notice that by lowering that opacity, it makes them a little less prominent in my scene and it looks a little bit more natural since everything in this image isn't completely black like those birds were. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to reflect that in this water here. So we'll actually just right click this layer, we'll duplicate it, We'll hit V on our keyboard to grab our move tool. And then I'm going to head up to this tool modifier section and I'm going to click this down arrow and that's going to flip it vertically. So I can just pull this layer down here now. <clears throat> and I'm just going to kind of position it to where it was. Maybe. Right there, that looks pretty good. So now what I wanna do is it looks a little bit unrealistic just because this water is kind of ripply. So I'm just gonna kind of pull these to make it a little bit longer. And I'm actually gonna go into effects here because you can modify each layer individually. So I can click effects and I can add different filters to just this layer here. So I'll add a filter, I'll add a lens blur filter, and I'll just increase the amount a little bit, make it a little bit blurry. And then I'll go up and I'll actually increase the opacity because everything would be darker if it's reflected. So maybe a little bit less. Okay. So now we've set the foundational look for this photo. We've added a new layer onto it. Now let's say we wanna stylize this photo and add some different filters and creative looks onto it. We're gonna to have to merge it together to create one single image. To do that, you can do two things. You can merge visible, which will merge all of those layers together and create one single file that you can modify, or you can right click and you, you can select new stamped layer. By selecting a new stamped layer, it's going to duplicate these three layers and merge them together so that you have a, a composite image with your three layers combined. And then you have these three layers still available if you wanna go back and you wanna modify. So if I wanna modify these three layers again, you know, say I wanna, I can go back and modify the sky area if I wanna adjust it a little bit more, I can do that by selecting new stamped layer. So now if I turn these two layers off and I turn this layer off and on, you'll see it's applied that sky layer or that bird layer on here and the bird layer in the water. So now we can actually stylize this photo as a whole and apply different stylistic filters to it. And so for this shot, I'm gonna give you some of my favorite filters to apply to photos. And one of them definitely has to be the LUTs filter. I love the Let's Filter simply because it brings in so much style and not a lot of time, and you don't really have to modify it too much. So let's add a filter, and we'll just add Let's. And we'll go into black and white because everything looks better in black and white. And right away, you can see that just by, you know, modifying a few different sliders inside develop and then adding some different filters, applying a new layer here, We've really kind of stylistically brought this photo to life. And there's a few other ones in here I like instead of LUTs. There's these cinematic color grading ones. And I really, really like this Forest Park one. So if I turn this layer off and on, you know, we've kind of elevated this photo's look, brought in some layers. Okay. 
So we'll just add another couple filters that I wanna show you guys how to use. And we'll add the curves filter to give you guys kind of a refresher on the tone curve. And the tone curve is great because it really allows you to modify each individual tone in this photo. And what I mean by that is you have your black point down here. So this is your black point on your photo. Your midtones are in here, and then your highlights are up here. So if I wanna add some style to the shot, I can pull up on this black point here. And by doing that, it's going to try to pull out those black details in my shot. Well, that's gonna give me a faded matte look. I wanna add that faded matte look. I can do that just by pulling up and then moving to the right a little bit. So now if I wanna boost my midtones a little bit, I can do that by pulling up on my midtone place here. And you'll see that that pulls up and boosts those midtones in my photo. But you'll also see that it kind of makes my image flat. Well, because this is on a curve, I can grab my shadows and I can pull them down to bring some of that contrast back into my photo. So now if I turn this off and on, it's added kind of a faded matte look and then styled it while boosting the midtones. And I can kind of pull this down even more. Okay, so I really like this curves filter for adding a you know muted matte look on your image. Well, if you add the curves filter, I like to add a kind of a buddy filter to that, if you could say that. And I like to add the sunshine or the split tone filter. And typically when it's an area like this and I have a lot of greens in my photo, I'll click on this warm, then I'll head down and I'll choose classic. If I turn that off and on, it just brings in a little bit of kind of highlight color to those um, greens and then brings in a little bit of darkness to the shadows in my photo. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard now, Those are just a few ways that you can kind of stylize your photo. So before we head on to the next shot, let me check the Q&A. Oh, awesome, thanks, Pat. Okay, so let's check YouTube, no questions so far. Okay, so let's just move on here. And I'll just delete these layers. Okay, so let's do this photo here. Okay, so I shot this photo at Smith, Smith Rock, Smith Rock um, last summer. And the first thing I like to do again is I usually like to crop my photo. So we're gonna hit C on our keyboard. We're gonna pull down on these corners just a hair. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's probably good right there. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna set my foundational look again. Well, I'm gonna head over to my tone and color and because I shot this photo in raw like the other photo, I can choose that camera profile. Well, not every photo needs to be having the profile changed. For example, if I scroll through these, that one looks pretty good, but it also brings in a lot of contrast into these areas that I don't want that dark. The portrait one, too flat, vivid, too dark, too flat, and so on and so forth. If you're not sure what camera profile to use, you don't have to change one. You can always just leave it at on one standard and you can always achieve the look you're wanting with any of these sliders over here. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually go in 
and I'm going to pull up on the contrast a little bit or pull up on the exposure a little bit, sorry, just a hair, just to kind of bring out some of these nice dark tones that were kind of hidden in these rocks here. I'm also going to pull back on the contrast a hair. And you'll see that by doing that, I'm revealing some of those darker areas in my photo. I'm going to pull up on the shadows just a tad. And I'll pull back on my midtones just a tad. Now, because my photo is a little bit flat, I'm actually going to head down to my black slider here and I'm going to pull back on it. And that's going to bring back some of that contrast into my photo. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we've brought out some of those dark tones in our photo and added some nice little detail in these areas that are a little bit shaded. So now let's actually go into effects and let's add a few different filters onto the shot. For this photo, I wanna add some detail onto these rocks. Obviously with detail, you're gonna to wanna to apply it um, carefully. But for this photo, there's a ton of rocks in this area. And so I do want to apply the dynamic contrast basically to the entire photo, but I don't want it to be applied to the sky area here. So we'll add a filter. We'll add dynamic contrast. And we'll turn it off and on. And you'll see again, it's crunching up the sky area here. Well, if we go into our masking options and we try luminosity mask, we can view it. And if we pull back on these sliders here, we'll invert it. So we got it where we want it. But if we modify these sliders here, it's a little bit difficult to get the rocks to have detail in this area here, because if we turn this mask view off, this area is still pretty bright on our photo. So a better masking option would be to use a color range mask. So let's reset this mask here. And I'm gonna grab a color range mask by clicking on this option here. I'm gonna grab this color dropper tool and I'm just gonna drop it on this nice color here. So now if I go in and I view my mask and I pull back on my color range, you see it's applying a lot more of that detail onto this area over here without remove or without applying it to the sky. And the cool thing about this is we can actually go and if I want to remove this, this area right here, I can go up and I can grab my perfect brush here. I'll make it quite big. And then I can just use that to brush out that area behind my rocks and not have it brush out any of the rock area. And so now I can turn that perfect brush off, turn it back on, and now we can just paint this detail into the areas that it wasn't being applied to. Now if we view that, and we turn this off and on, does a good job of just applying that detail to this area and not our sky area. So now let's add another filter. And one of my all time favorite filters to apply to a landscape photo has to be the sunshine filter. And that's gonna work great on this image simply because we have this nice area of sun hitting the rocks. So anytime you have sun hitting something in a photo or there's kind of selective light on your subject, try out the sunshine filter. What it does is it brightens up the highlights and bright areas in your image, and it darkens the shadowy dark tones to kind of emulate a sunshine look. So let's add a filter. I'll just add that sunshine filter. 
And the great thing about the sunshine filter is I can actually modify the warmth and coolness of it on my shot. If I don't like how warm it is, I can cool it down. Or if I don't know like how cool it is, I can warm it up a little bit. I'm just gonna pull back on the warmth of the hair to about right there. And let's actually pull up on the amount a little bit more. Right there. So now if I turn this off and on, I really like how that works on my rocks in here, but I don't like how it looks on the sky. So we can use that copy and paste technique we did earlier with that other photo. I'm just gonna go in to my dynamic contrast filter here. I'll go into the masking options. I'll copy that mask. I'll go into my sunshine filter. I'll paste that mask. And now if I turn this off and on, Voila, it's only being applied to this bottom area in my photo and not being applied anywhere in the sky. And I really love that copy and paste option because it allows you to modify a ton of different masks by using this as a guide. So now let's say we wanna modify the sky area a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting by adding a texture onto it. Well, let's just add a filter, we'll add a texture here. And let's see if we can add some more drama to this photo by applying another sky texture on top of it. Let's go to skies. And let's see if any of these skies look good on here. We'll paste that mask, invert it. Let's see, go up and let's modify this brightness a little bit. And maybe pull it down a hair. Okay, so now if we turn this off and on. Let's add a little bit of something to the photo, kind of brings in a nice little look to the shot. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we begin set that foundational look for our shot. But now let's say we want to stylize that photo a little bit and apply some different filters onto it. Well, we can add another filter and we'll add a texture and let's get creative and add a light leak. I'm just gonna go into my more and I'll choose this light leak number four. And whenever you're adding light leaks, I would avoid applying a light leak in the same side as you have your subject. So if you have this subject over here, I would avoid putting a light leak on this side because it kind of masks out the subject and makes it a little bit um, distracting. So if I was gonna add a light leak, I would definitely apply it into a different area of your photo than the subject. So we'll just use this light leak number four. Now what I wanna do is I'll just go in and I'll just apply a new filter to this photo and we'll just apply one more and we'll do a vintage filter. Let's go in and we'll use this warm. Let's just pull back on the opacity a little bit. There we go. Now if we hit the backslash key in our keyboard, we brought out some of those darker tones in our photo, kind of elevated the sky layer here and we've selectively applied detail into this uh, rocky area. 
Okay, so let's head over to the Q&A, see if there's any questions here. Okay, so Mark asks, trees along the stream, fame, stream, sorry, trees along the stream seem very soft. Say that five times fast, Mark. Okay, so yeah, they are a little bit soft. So what we can do is there's two different things we could do. We could apply sharpening or we could apply dynamic contrast. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna apply sharpening. And I'm actually going to go into my masking and I'm gonna invert it. And now I'll go in and I'll hold down shift, hit X. Now I'll just brush the sharpening on these trees here. Good call, Mark. And they look a lot better like that. Okay, so now if we hit the backslash key, yeah, those look a lot better with that sharpening applied. Thanks for the suggestion, Mark. Okay, so that was um, kind of the, the gist of the webinar today. Is there anything you guys wanted to see um, kind of while I'm here? Just a couple more minutes, I can let you guys, you know, add a couple comments if you have any questions about anything or if there was something that was a little more confusing that you wanted me to go over again, feel free to, um, you know, hit up either YouTube in the comments or that Q&A inside Zoom. And I'll just wait a couple minutes and uh, see if you guys have any questions, so. Okay, so portrait. Okay, Philip, we'll do we'll do a portrait here. Go back into browse. And let's see. So in monochrome. Trying to think of a good monochrome image that would be good here. We'll have to portrait demo. Hmm. Oh, this is actually a killer photo in monochrome. Okay, so this is a killer photo in monochrome here. Okay, cool. So for example, this shot is a portrait. So I tend to crop portraits more often than I crop landscapes. So what I wanna do is I just wanna crop this photo. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard. Oops, gotta be in the program. And then I'm gonna go up to my preset styles and I'm actually gonna choose four by five here. And I really like four by fives, especially for portraits because I like intimate portraits, ones where, you know, the face is quite close, you know, close up shots. I'm just gonna hold down shift and I'll pull in a little bit. Actually, there we go. Okay, so now we've cropped this portrait and I really wanna modify uh, the foundational look for this photo, especially the color, cause it seems a little bit warm. Well, because it was shot in raw, a great way to fix that is to head over to your camera profile and just click on portrait. You see that by doing that, it's lightened the image a little bit. It's pulled a little bit of that orange color cast out of my photo. And now I have a little bit more room to play. Well, what I wanna do to this shot is I'm actually gonna pull up on the contrast that did maybe about at 10. Then I'm gonna pull up on the midtones just a hair. And that's gonna pull up on those grays. So you'll notice that if I pull up on the midtones, it's just bringing out sort of those middle tones in my image. Oh. I'm probably not gonna deal with any of the shadows for this photo, but I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna add just a tad of true black. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we've brought out the exposure for this photo, but now we need to deal with the color. 
So for this particular photo, I would head down and I would just play with the temperature slider. And I'm probably just gonna pull up on the color a little bit. And let's actually go down and let's pull up on our vibrance. And let's select reduce vibrance on skin. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we've brought out a lot of those foundational tones in the image. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna retouch this photo a little bit. So there's a few different minor blemishes in here that I can remove from her face. So I'll just zoom in and I'll head over to my toolbar area over here and I'll grab my fix tools. Inside your fix tools, you're gonna to have these three different tools you can use to retouch or remove things from your photo. This first one is your magic eraser, which is good if you maybe had, for example, if there was a hair coming, coming across her face, you could use this magic eraser tool you could make it really, really small and you could brush it around and remove that hair. But since we're just modifying these small imperfections, I'm actually gonna go up and I'm gonna grab this retouch brush or the, yeah, the retouch brush. Now, if I wanna go in and remove these, I can just drop it on them. And it will remove them from my image. Oops, I didn't do a good job. There we go. And just one more here. Okay, so now I'll zoom out. And let's say we wanna kind of smooth out the skin tones on her face. Well, there's a few different ways you can do that you can apply skin retouching inside of effects. You could use your portrait tab here, but one of my favorite ways is to simply use a local adjustment. So I'm just gonna use a local adjustment here and I'm actually gonna head down to my paint with color option. I'm gonna use my color dropper and I'm gonna drop it on a neutral skin tone on her face, probably about right in here. Now I'll head up and I'm actually gonna lower the opacity to about uh, 25 or 30. And then I'm just gonna brush this on. I'm actually gonna go up and I'm gonna view this mask here. I'm gonna change my mask mode and I'll just view this mask. Maybe I do need to view the other way. There we go. Okay, so we do have a little bit over there. Sorry, I just painted on a little bit too strong. So I just wanted to see where else I needed to paint it on to. Okay, so now if I turn this off and on, I can pull down on the opacity a little bit. But you'll see it really does a good job of smoothing out those skin tones on her face and kind of removing those strong highlights. And it also acts as sort of a skin smoother as well. So this is a quick way if you're just kind of zooming through portraits and you wanna smooth out skin, that local adjustment tab, sorry, excuse me, is a great way to smooth out those skin tones for your photo. So now what we can do 
is I'm actually going to apply a new local adjustment also. And I'm going to go into these preset styles here and I'm going to choose Magic Eye Fixer. And the Magic Eye Fixer is great if you want to just kind of boost some detail in the eyes. And you can also do it with other things on the face as well. So if you want to bring out some detail in these lips, you can kind of use the same filter. So I'm just going to brush this on in her eyes here and it's going to be pretty strong. So we're lower the opacity here. Maybe a little bit less. We'll add a new local adjustment layer. Same thing, magic eye fixer. Now we're gonna put this on our lips. And we're gonna turn it down a ton. See how it has that kind of subtle highlight in her lips now? So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we've set the foundational look for the shot. So now we can go into effects and we can start playing with the different filters for the photo. So if we wanna make it a monochromatic photo or if we wanna add some black and white to the shot, there's two different ways that I like to do that. The first way is you can add a LUTs filter and you can use one of the preset black and white styles. And one of my favorites is this pyro option. I mean, just look at that. The next way is to add a filter and you can just apply black and white. And my favorite in here is this red option. So there you go. That's how to add some style to a photo, kind of bring out that foundational look and also smooth out some skin tones. So any more questions so far? Um, I probably can't show anything too much. It's almost been an hour, but if you do have any quick questions I can answer, feel free to shoot me those and I'll try to get to those. Um, I'll probably just stay on here for a couple more minutes. And we have a question on YouTube from Ari. It says, are these webinars regularly scheduled? So these are weekly webinars. So we have a webinar every week about a new topic. There are some, um, uh, late registers to this webinar and you are watching, it is being recorded. So if you do, if you did miss out on the beginning of the show, um, it's being recorded and we'll be posting it to our YouTube, our blog and our Facebook later today. Okay. So Okay, so one from Mark's here. Do you use a mouse or a drawing pad? I use a mouse for these webinars. I wish I used a drawing pad though. I would make it a little bit easier from asking, but I just use a mouse. Um, but I do use a drawing pad for um, graphic design stuff. It's a Wacom uh, tablet. And there's a few different questions in here about um, Fujifilm and kind of file supporting questions. Do any of the black and white LUTs include Fuji monofilm simulations? And so Philip asks, do any of the black and white LUTs include Fuji monofilm simulations? And I'm not entirely sure. Um, I didn't create any of the black and white filters that came with the LUTs. I created um, some of the cinematic color grading ones. So I'm not entirely sure about that, Phil. I'm sure you could kind of emulate it, you, you know, using a LUT or making your own style. Any more questions here? Nope. All right, guys. Well, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, I hope you guys learned um, some new tips and tricks to use inside Photo Raw. And uh, oh, wait. So Jay asked, could someone let me know about Canyon RW3 support? And I'm not, I don't, 
know 100% sure about that answer. So I'll get your email after this and I'll send you a, um, just kind of a personal email about that because I have no idea, but I'll find that answer and then I'll get back to you, Jay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you joining me again. Thanks so much. And I'll look forward to the next one. If you want to check out new webinars and want to register for them, head to onone.com slash webinars. So just onone.com slash webinars, and you can view all of the new webinars coming out and register for them. Thanks, guys.